Greetings everyone, Banner from The Virtual Economist and welcome to episode 8 in my unusual trading guide. Now just like I talked about in the last episode, this video will be the second video to delve into the concept of trading strategies and will serve as part 2 to the last one. Now in that video I talked about being proactive and non-proactive and delved into 3 important trading strategies. In this video I'm going to talk about 4 more strategies and then get into a summary of unusual trading, talking about when to use each technique. Alright, so without further ado, let's get right on into the video, starting with more specific trading strategies. Strategy number 4, Upgrading and Downgrading. I would rate this a 4 out of 5 difficulty, a 3 out of 5 profitability, a 4 out of 5 speed, and a 3 out of 5 risk. Last episode I talked about using upgrading and downgrading as a means to get rid of bad unusuals. While this is a great use of these trading techniques, you can actually make a whole trading strategy out of upgrading, then downgrading, and then upgrading again. You see, when you make trades that either upgrade or downgrade your unusuals, there is a very high chance that one side will be overpaying to compensate for getting the trade. As a result, if you can make sure that you get more overpay than what you have to overpay by to get these trades, you can net a little bit of profit each time you upgrade and downgrade. Now if this just went right over your head, let me explain with an example. Let's say you have two 30 key hats, and you find someone on a trade server that wants to offer their crappy 70 key unusual into your two unusuals giving you an upgrade. As long as their unusual isn't too overpriced, you really shouldn't be too unhappy about making the trade and taking the 10 keys overpay. Now you should go about downgrading it. Let's assume that you find someone with a 30 key hat and a 34 key hat who says that they are willing to accept a 2 for 1 trade if you overpay 6 keys with your 70 key hat. Now while overpaying might not seem that great, it is actually expected due to the advantages of downgrading and it really is not a bad trade at all. Since you invested the two 30 key unusuals in the first place, it's really easy to compare them to the 30 and the 34 key hats that you just got to show that you've made roughly 4 keys profit using this technique. Just upgrade again and rinse and repeat. I also do think it's worth pointing out that you can do this with single unusuals as well. If someone offers you some insane 15 keys overpay with their, say, horribly inflated unusual taunt, it can often still be worth it. Just be proactive and overpay like 10 keys on a better unusual again, and you just net yourself roughly 5 keys profit. Now what can really crank up the profitability of upgrading and downgrading is if you can find someone who is willing to offer you an equal value downgrade or is willing to offer you a downgrade with overpay. Again, if this is confusing, let's go back to the last example. If someone is willing to offer you an equal value downgrade, it would be like finding someone who is willing to offer exactly 70 keys in good lower tier unusuals on your new 70 key hat, dating you roughly 10 keys compared to what you invested in the first place. Now, if someone is willing to offer a downgrade with overpay, it'd be like finding someone willing to offer an insane 80 keys in cheap unusuals on your 70 key hat, easily handing you around 20 keys clear profit. While these scenarios aren't super common, I do want to point out that you can still get them occasionally on trade servers if you are in the right place at the right time. You will also increase your odds of getting an offer like this if you just list your new unusual you upgraded into on the classifieds for a few weeks, but I would caution you guys that this doesn't really work if you have a bad unusual and definitely slows down the overall process. In fact, I really wouldn't recommend doing that much at all. This is because, to me, one of the biggest reasons to use this strategy is because of its speed. When you apply this strategy, you can often rely solely on trades made on trade servers, so if you have the time to devote to jumping on servers for an hour or two every day, you can actually make some serious profit with this in no time. However, I do want to caution you guys that this strategy is sometimes a little bit harder than you might expect. This is because a lot of the time you will have to wait around to find someone willing to give you a downgrade, and you definitely have to make sure to avoid getting on streaks where you upgrade and downgrade into worse and worse tier unusuals. This strategy also doesn't work super well when you're just getting into unusual trading, but if you do have a medium to large amount of capital, it is still a great way to make profit in the mid game of unusual trading. Strategy number 5, Flipping Unpriced Unusuals. I would rate this a 3 out of 5 difficulty, a 5 out of 5 profitability, a 3 out of 5 speed, and a 3 out of 5 risk. If you remember back to my episode on unpriced unusuals, I said that unpriced items are some of the most profitable in the entire game. Now I wasn't kidding at all when I said that. Unpriced unusuals can be stupidly profitable, and making profit with them is actually very straightforward. All you have to do is buy an unpriced unusual for less than what you think it should be valued at, and then just resell it for either what or more than you think it should be worth. For example, let's take the Death of Dust Grenader soft cap from the episode on unpriced unusuals. Let's assume you're on a trade server and you trade up someone advertising it for, say, 60 keys. 
After a little bit of negotiation, let's assume you're able to get him to sell it for 50 keys by convincing him that unpriced unusuals are harder to sell and that it would be difficult for him to get more than 50 keys on it. Now, keeping in mind that we valued the unusual at around 65 keys previously, now all you have to do is offer the soft cap on people's 51 to say 80 key hats, and you can even do it on the exact same trade server. Let's assume that two hours later, you wind up finding someone willing to buy it for 60 keys in unusuals. Boom, you just made an easy 10 keys profit. Now, another great thing about this strategy is that it can be used to get rid of hard to sell unusuals, since a lot of the time people are willing to accept bad stuff for their unpriced items, just so they can get a value on their backpack.tf graph. Unfortunately, the reverse is also quite true, as it is very rare to get super nice unusuals when you are selling unpriced items. As a consequence of this, definitely the biggest downside to this strategy is that it often takes you very far away from getting pure keys. As I talked about in the episode on unpriced unusuals, I would almost never buy an unpriced item for pure keys, and it isn't very likely that you're going to be getting pure for your unpriced unusuals either. So if you want pure to be more readily available, you might want to spend the time transitioning the unusuals you get from unpriced items into better unusuals using the trading strategies that I talked about in the last episode. Strategy number six. Steam Community Market Arbitrage. I would rate this a 3 out of 5 difficulty, a 2 out of 5 profitability, a 1 out of 5 speed, and a 2 out of 5 risk. At this point, you probably gather that this strategy has something to do with buying and selling unusuals on the Steam Community Market, but you might not know what market arbitrage means. Well, the dictionary definition of this is actually selling goods in multiple different markets for different prices. Now, in this case, the two markets are the normal item market and the Steam community market. You see, because Backpack.tf prices items in keys and the Steam market prices items in Steam wallet funds, it is actually pretty common for the exact same unusual to sell for either far more or far less on one market than the other, and of course, this is where you can jump in and make profit. Now, before we delve too far into this, I do want to point out a few important things about unusuals on the Steam community market. Number one, all effects of an unusual are grouped into one page on the marketplace. To find this for any given unusual item, just hover over it and hit the button with the Steam logo on backpack.tf. Number two, past sales don't mean anything. After all, with all the effects on the exact same page, the hat that sold for four times more than most was probably an effect like burning flames, not your bubbling one. Number three, very few unusual sell on the Steam community market every day, so don't have unrealistic expectations about selling items here. Number four, you will have to wait a week after buying anything on the market, so this definitely isn't the most inherently fast technique to making profit. Alright, so at this point, we better get into the details for making profit. The way I see it, there are two main parts to utilizing the Steam community market, buying unusuals and selling unusuals. First, let's go ahead and go over buying unusuals. Of course, if you're in the game to make profit, you're going to want to be looking to buy an unusual at way cheaper on the Steam community market than its backpack.tf price. However, to find out whether something is a good deal or not, you're going to need to convert the Steam market prices into keys and then compare that amount to the backpack.tf price. To calculate this, just divide the unusual's market price by the market price of keys after Steam's 15% tax, and there you go. Now, it is very important that you remember the tax bit, since you will have to sell keys to buy anything with wallet funds, and if you don't account for the tax on selling items, it's going to throw your key value estimate way off. Now, at this point, you have to avoid the huge pitfall of buying anything with a few keys discount. You see, since you have to sell keys on the market to pay for these unusuals, you are basically buying with pure keys, and thus you absolutely must buy at quick sell prices. So just compare the amount of keys the seller is selling for and the backpack.tf price, and if there is at least a 25% off discount, it is probably worth it. Just cash out the keys, purchase it, and wait a week for it to be tradable on backpack.tf. As for the type of unusuals to target on the marketplace, it is definitely rare to find good deals on sub-20 key hats, simply because the market on these unusuals is semi-competitive. Instead, you should look to buy higher-end effects that are more expensive on Backpack.tf and definitely have less set-in-stone prices on the Steam community market. Also, following my advice from the last episode, buying unusuals that you think can sell for pure keys is always an insane deal. Last, I would especially recommend browsing the marketplace when a new crate or case is released, since a lot of inexperienced players list brand new unusual unboxes for way cheaper than they should, and you can often score some stupidly insane deals. Finally, let's talk about selling unusuals on the market. Just like selling keys, the biggest thing you need to consider here is that Steam is going to take their 15% tax on every single unusual that you sell. For the most part though, this isn't actually the biggest deal, due to number one, most people listing their unusuals for more to compensate for the tax, and number two, the fact that you are basically selling your unusual for pure keys, since you can just buy keys with the wallet funds that you get. Now, if you need to convert the monetary amount that you're selling an unusual for into the key equivalent value, it is pretty similar to when buying unusuals, just switching around where the tax is taken. 
Just take the price of your unusual after tax, divide it by the market price of keys, and then there you go. Now, for the most part, expensive unusuals are much harder to sell on the community market, so you should focus on listing low tiers that are less than 20 keys. For those unusuals, as long as you are the cheapest seller, you will find that you can sell them pretty easily for close to or even sometimes a little bit more than their equivalent backpack.tf price and keys. Also, right after the holiday season is a great time to list unusuals on the marketplace as tons of people have brand new Steam gift cards and are looking on the market to snag their next set of virtual pixels. Strategy number 7. Cash Market Arbitrage I would rate this a 4 out of 5 difficulty, a 4 out of 5 profitability, a 2 out of 5 speed, and a 5 out of 5 risk. Now, just like using the Steam community market, this strategy involves using prices on a different market to make profit, with in this case it being the real world cash market. I'm actually going to be talking about cash trading a lot more in the very last episode of this guide, so I'm definitely going to keep this more focused on the overall strategy of cash trading instead of the step by step specifics. Anyway, just like you'd expect, there are two parts to cash trading, buying unusuals for cash and selling unusuals for cash. Now to be honest, I would say that it is rarely profitable to sell unusuals here, simply because most people expect you to discount your items incredibly heavily. And this isn't because people are greedy. The cash market exists to allow people to get their virtual pixels into real world money, and since people are paying with real currency, they are basically buying with something even purer than pure keys. Thus, if you're selling your unusual for cash, a lot of people are going to ask you to discount it to the point where it is basically a quick sell. In addition, due to the inherent risk associated with making trades beyond the scope of the trade window, you will often have to discount it even more to sell it to a reputable buyer or toss the 10% tax at marketplace.tf to guarantee a safe transaction. Putting all of this together, I wouldn't really recommend selling unusuals on the cash market unless you can find the rare person who is highly reputable and willing to pay close to the backpack.tf price on your unusual. Instead, I would highly recommend using the cash market to buy unusuals, since as I just talked about, people are expected to discount heavily, giving you the opportunity to make some serious profit. Of course, to know whether an item is a good deal or not, you need to convert between the cash price someone is selling their unusual for to a number of keys and compare that to the backpack.tf price. To do this, just divide their cash selling price by the price you can get for selling keys on the cash market, and boom, you now have a number of keys. Just compare this to the backpack.tf price, and if it is in the 30-50% to off range, then it just might be worth it to jump on the offer. I would also especially recommend looking for people attempting to cash out, as you can often steal unusuals for close to 40-50% to off if you find the right sellers. Anyway, at this point I have talked about, in my opinion, most of the major unusual trading strategies. There are definitely more out there, but a lot of them are quite small and technical in comparison, and chances are they wouldn't really apply to most of you. That being said, there is still one major type of trading that I haven't talked about at all yet, and that is high tier and god tier trading. Now if you thought I was going to skip over it, don't fear. High tier trading is actually the topic of the entirety of the next episode, so look forward to that when it comes out. For now, let's jump into the final part of the video. Now, while I've covered a ton of things so far in my unusual trading guide, I can still anticipate people asking me the same questions over and over, questions along the lines of, I have X unusual, what should I do to sell it, or I have 20 keys pure, what can I do to make profit? To be honest though, I think the reason these questions keep coming up is because people don't know what trading strategies to apply in each scenario. So as a way to help answer these questions, I figured I should end this video with essentially a summary of unusual trading that can help explain what you should do at each step in the process of trading unusuals. Now to me, the best way to explain this is to visualize unusual trading as a spectrum based on the amount of capital you have or the amount of keys of items in your backpack. This is because the way I see it, a lot of what strategy you should be using at any given time is actually directly correlated to how much resources you have at your disposal. Since around 10 keys is the minimum you need to get into unusual trading, it makes sense for 10 keys to be the first point on the spectrum and a great place to start. Let's assume that you are someone who saw my first unusual trading guide and decided to buy yourself 10 keys using a Steam gift card. So for the thousands of people that ask me what to do with 10 keys, you might just want to listen up here. Because you have such a low amount of capital, you need to find strategies that work without requiring expensive items, and you also need a proactive strategy, as you can't afford to wait around when you have to tie up all of your capital into one unusual. Thus, to me the best strategy to use here is quick buying and quick selling. Because you will be buying such cheap unusuals, you really shouldn't expect to get hats with large discounts. However, you can still easily make profit off a 25-25% to off quick sell. So to find these, you should browse backpack.tf, outpost, trade.tf, and especially trade servers, and look for people who are willing to sell their cheap hats for a discount. 
Then when you manage to get a quick sell with your keys, just try and re-quick sell it for even a little bit more by advertising it on trade servers or on the classifieds. Keep in mind that even a profit of 10 ref is worth it, so try not to hold on to any one unusual for too long. You can still be open to unusual offers on hats that you get, but you should try and only accept offers that get you an unusual that is easier to re-quick sell by trying to either upgrade tier in an equal value trade or by taking small overpay offers. If you can do this for a number of weeks, you should really be able to work your way up to around 20 to 30 keys pure. At this point, I would still recommend quick buying and quick selling as your primary way to gain profit, as you still need to be very proactive with a low amount of capital, and you can actually get far greater discounts and profit margins with the more keys you invest. If you keep doing this, you should be able to work your way up to around 50 keys. Now, when you do get to around this amount of keys, just scaling up the size of quick sales gets far more risky. You will find it much harder to find people with enough keys to afford your quick sales, and you have a much higher chance of trading for a severely overpriced unusual that could definitely get price adjusted lower. So at this point, I would recommend other strategies alongside quick buying and quick selling cheaper unusuals. The two I would especially recommend are upgrading and downgrading, as well as trading for unpriced unusuals. Upgrading and downgrading is especially a great technique at this price range, as you now have enough capital to be able to do it, and it can be used very proactively. Also, whenever possible, try and get your trading partners to add just a little bit of pure, either in keys or sweets, as any pure you get here can be used to buy quick sells. Trading for unpriced unusuals also works quite well at this price range, as there are a lot of unpriced hats at this value, and you can flip them relatively quickly on trade servers for easy profit. If you can use these techniques well, you should be able to almost double your capital in no time. Now, when you do have over around 100 keys in unusuals, I would say that pretty much all the trading strategies that I talked about can be used effectively, and getting more capital won't really affect what you should be doing. In my opinion, the most important strategy that you can now afford to use is being non-proactive. Just like I talked about in my last video, being non-proactive and just letting your items sit on the classifieds will get you far higher profit margins with far less work, so it is definitely where you want to be when you have a large amount of capital. However, as I've talked about over and over again, this strategy simply does not work with bad unusuals. Thus, the way I see it, the best way to approach unusual trading with a high amount of capital is really to think in terms of good and bad unusuals. Good unusuals should be listed on the classifieds to wait for good offers, and anything bad you get you should consider quick selling, upgrading with, downgrading with, offering it on a better hat, or on an unpriced unusual to eventually make some profit proactively and get them into items that are just a little bit easier to sell. Of course, if you ever obtain pure in any of your trades, just look to buy quick sales as soon as you can come across a deal worth jumping on. It also doesn't hurt to learn how to use the Steam community market, the cash market, and how to get into high and god tier unusuals, but these strategies really aren't necessary at all to make huge amounts of profit in unusual trading. Anyway, that is just going to about do it for the video. I know this video has been super long, but I really would have condensed everything if I thought I could explain it better in a shorter amount of time. Congrats to everyone who got this far in the video, and as always, if you have any questions, just feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Until next time guys, thanks for watching.